In this short video, we will see the principle of operation of induction motors. The pictures here show the basic construction of induction motors. There is a stator with three phase winding placed in slots and a cylindrical rotor having conductors placed in it. The rotor type shown here is called squirrel cage type. There are conductors placed in the slots on the cylindrical rotor surface and they are connected to the two end rings at the two ends of the rotor core, enabling easy flow of current. The induction motors operate with the help of the rotating magnetic field created in it. First, we shall see how the rotating magnetic field, or RMF in short, is created. For simplicity, consider single turn windings as shown here. We have three windings, R, Y, and B, separated by 120 degrees. When they are energized individually, they produce alternating field perpendicular to the plane of the winding. If the R phase alone is energized with a sinusoidal current, the flux produced will be perpendicular to the plane of the R coil as seen here. This is simply a pulsating flux and there is no rotation. The same thing happens when the other phases are energized individually. Here we see the Y phase flux. And then the B phase flux. When all the three phases are energized simultaneously, the sum of the three fields makes up as shown by the green line here. We can see how the flux is produced in different phase positions. The net flux represented by the green line has constant magnitude and rotates with constant angular velocity. This is the rotating magnetic field. If required, you may pause the video to have a closer look of the flux at different phase positions. Now we are seeing the sequence with a faster playback. So, when the stator winding is energized with a three-phase supply, a rotating magnetic field is generated. The speed of rotation of the RMF will be at the synchronous speed, ns, given by the expression 120f by p, where f is the supply frequency, and p is the number of poles for which the stator is wound. The picture here represents a machine with a two-pole winding. The RMF will have its influence on the rotor conductors and induces a current in it. The interaction between the rotor current and the stator flux produces a torque on the rotor conductors and causes the rotor to rotate in the same direction as that of the RMF. The rotor rotates at a speed n, which is slightly less than that of the RMF. The slower rotation of rotor with respect to the RMF is an essential requirement for generation of torque. If the two speeds, ns and n are the same, then there is no cutting of flux lines in the rotor conductors, no induced current, and no torque generated. The difference in speed is represented by a term called slip. The expression for slip is ns minus n by ns. It is a common practice to represent slip as a percentage value, and the expression for percentage slip is like this. Typical value of slip varies in the range of 2 to 4 percent. Here is a summary of points about the principle of operation of induction motors. Induction motors have a distributed stator winding which produces a rotating magnetic field. Induction motors develop torque due to the induced current in the rotor conductors and its interaction with the stator flux. Speed of induction motor is always slightly less than the speed of the RMF. The difference in speed of the motor and the synchronous speed is represented by a term called slip. Thank you for watching.